السلام عليكم ورحمة الله إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعين ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا ما يهده الله فلا مضل له وما يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم صل وسلم وبارك عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم The Quran, the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala The thing between us and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from us to have this total submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and there is no way for a believer, for a Muslim to be in total submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala unless we recite the Quran and ponder over the Quran and having this in ourselves that we are ready to accept and to submit ourselves without even sometimes knowing the wisdom behind the orders from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If a person gets to know the wisdom behind the orders, mashallah, this is great. But if the person didn't, because the human beings do not have the ability to see what's ahead, what's coming ahead, uh, their, uh, their sight to what's coming ahead is so limited. That's why we get to know that through the Qur'an and the way of the Prophet والسلام, and this time, inshallah ta'ala, we'll see that in a clear example from the verses of the Qur'an and how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tested the companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam and tested the ummah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam till the day of judgment with their full submission to the orders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, one of which in fighting for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Verses of Surah Al-Baqarah from 216 and 217. 216 and 217 from Surah Al-Baqarah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the first verse, verse number 216, أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم كتب عليكم القتال وهو كره لكم وعسى أن تكرهوا شيئا وهو خير لكم وعسى أن تحبوا شيئا وهو شر لكم والله يعلم وأنتم لا تعلمون which means fighting has been enjoined upon you while it is hateful to you. But perhaps you hate a thing and it is good for you. And perhaps you love a thing and it is bad for you. And Allah knows while you know not. This verse, as the ulama they say in the explanation of it, that this is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordained fighting in jihad in the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the believers. Kutiba alaykum al qital. And kutib, which means it's been ordained written for you to do so and so and so on and so forth. This one of the words that means it's wajib, it's mandatory. What comes after it means that it's been ordained unto you, that this is mandatory for you, O Muslims, for those who believe in the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What comes after it means it's mandatory for you to do so. Kutiba alaykum al-qital. Al-qital is fighting. Fighting and of course for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And fighting for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has been ordained unto the companions radiallahu anhum and to the ummah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam because of its great benefits. And this is one of the, as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam said, the highest level of matters of al-Islam, dhirwatu salam al-Islam, al-jihadu fi sabil Allah, that the highest level of al-Islam is to fight for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the most high, he wants from his slaves to submit totally to him, subhanahu wa ta'ala, willingly. That they would give from their time and their wealth and their health. They give everything for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because this life is nothing but a temporary one. And the purpose of a believer on the face of earth is to make the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala superior. This is the goal. This is the, the subject of our life on the face of earth is to establish the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Is to establish the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on earth. And as a result of that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took the believers from one step to the other, levels of submission. 
levels to test them when it comes to the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the love of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the highest level is when a person is subjected to even losing one's life, but all of that for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is ordained to bring what is good, not to bring what is evil, because evil is forbidden. To bring what is good and to push away what is evil as we would see, inshallah ta'ala. So al-qital meaning fighting, physical fighting for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with its rulings and conditions and, and pillars and so on and so forth which is discussed throughout the verses of the Qur'an and in the way of the Prophet sallallahu and from the sayings of the ulama. When this is mentioned and uh, fighting for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala once the Prophet sallallahu was sent was taken in a gradual form. The Prophet sallallahu in Mecca when the believers were oppressed they were not ordered to fight for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet ﷺ was ordered to convey the message and to call people to the truth. First secretly, and then after that it was openly. And the disbelievers, they caused so much harm to the Prophet ﷺ and his companions. And then when the Prophet ﷺ migrated from Mecca to al Madina, then this is where the establishment of this duty and this obligation fighting in the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was established first to defend oneself and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered the believers to spread the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to break the barriers between the people and for them to get to know the truth and the justice of the religion of Islam. So as a result of this order from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then comes what is in the nature of the human being. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَهُوَ كُرْهُ لَكُمْ That the fighting in the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has been enjoined upon you while it is hateful to you. What is hateful? We know that the believers, they love the orders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They are pleased with the orders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why every morning and every evening we say, رَضِيتُ بِاللَّهِ رَبَّا وَبِالْإِسْلَامِ دِينَا وَبِمُحَمَّدٍ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمَ نَبِيًّا that we say we are pleased with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala being our Rabb, our Lord. And we are pleased with Al-Islam to be our religion. And we are pleased with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam being our Prophet. But what is mentioned here in this verse, وَهُوَ كُرْهٌ لَكُمْ Something that you would dislike, something that you would hate. This is when it comes to your nature as human beings. Your nature as a human being, you don't like that. You don't like to put yourself in danger that you might lose your life. No human being on the face of earth would say, I would love to do that, unless a person is not uh, going through a normal life. But normally, people would hate that. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the creator of the heavens and the earth, and the creator of the human being, and the one that created in the human beings what they love and what they hate by their nature, he's the one that ordained for them to fight for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's by the great wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So uh, this is to give the comfort for the believers that this order is coming from the all-knower subhanahu wa ta'ala that he knows that it's something in your nature you would hate such a thing but why this has happened why this is ordained unto you because what comes afterwards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says وَعَسَى أَن تَكْرَهُ شَيْئًا وَهُوَ خَيْرٌ لَكُمْ وَعَسَى أَن تُحِبُّ شَيْئًا وَهُوَ شَرٌ لَكُمْ وَاللَّهُ يَعْلَمُ وَأَنْتُمْ لَا تَعْلَمُونَ which means but perhaps you hate a thing and it is good for you. And perhaps you love a thing and it is bad for you. And Allah knows while you know not. The statement of the verse is such a mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we get to know that. People on the face of earth, there are things that they like and things that they dislike. And things in reality is by its outcome. We might like something in our immediate time, but then you don't know if it's harmful for you down the road or not. The same thing, you might hate something so much, but you see that it's so benefiting for you later on. That means the religion of Islam and the wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not necessarily comes and brings what you like in your nature. It comes with what is benefiting for you, whether you might like it or you might not like it, but it's definitely of great benefit to you. We see that physically in our life in many, many things. A person is given a medicine, for example. The medicine might not taste very pleasant, but a person would take it willingly, pleased to take the medicine, because the person knows the outcome of taking the medicine. It's a mean that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
guided the human beings to, to make so that it would relieve pain, for example, so that it would bring benefit to the people. For example, a person going to school, people would endure patience while they are studying and their hearts are attached to what comes after the school is finished, having a job, having a career and so on. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the most wise, He created the, the life that we live. This is the way that it is created for, that people would see that they would have to do something, maybe that they would not like it necessarily, but they would see the outcome of it. And when it comes to matters of the unseen, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered us that we have the good expectations of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when we recite the Qur'an, we follow the way of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we should have this total submission to the orders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَعَسَىٰ أَن تَكْرَهُ شَيْئًا وَهُوَ خَيْرٌ لَكُمْ But perhaps that you would hate something and it's good for you. And in this context of this verse, when it comes to fighting, fighting is something that human beings by nature, they don't like to do that. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is comforting the believers that even though by your nature you would not like such a thing, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if the order comes from Him, and He's the one that created you, and He's the most merciful, and He is the all-knowledgeable subhanahu wa ta'ala, that means it's good for you. That's why when we see things in our life, things that are good for us and things that are evil for us, anything that is mentioned in the Qur'an, in the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi an order from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we say that this is absolute goodness for us. There's no doubt about it whatsoever. Whether we see the outcome or not, whether we see the, the wisdom behind it or not. So if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, كُتِبَ عَلَيْكُمُ الْقِتَالُ وَهُوَ كُرْهُ لَكُمْ That if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that fighting has been prescribed unto you, ordained unto you, that means without no doubt, we say that this is definitely a good thing. Because this is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the creator of the heavens and the earth. Anything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would forbid us from doing, we say that this is absolute evil. There is no goodness in it whatsoever. And you can say that with certainty. There is no goodness of it in, on the face of earth or in the hereafter. And anything that a person would see of goodness, it's not real goodness. It's goodness that comes with intoxications. Something that is only for a short period of time, because the real happiness or the real misery is the one that a person would have for an everlasting life. So anything that is good, anything that is mentioned that it's evil, mentioned in the Qur'an or in the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, we say that this is something that has no doubt about it. We know for sure that this is what is mentioned in the Qur'an and the sunnah. But anything that is not there, right, our permissible affairs, getting married to that individual or not, entering this school or not, and so on and so forth, then we do not really know whether, whether it's good or bad for us. And that's why the Prophet ﷺ ordered us to pray the two rak'ah of istikhara. For example, when a person is in hesitation whether to do one thing or the other, we turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and seek help and so on. So the verse is teaching us this, and especially when it comes to something that a person naturally would uh, dislike. وَعَسَىٰ أَن تُحِبُّ شَيْئًا وَهُوَ شَرٌ لَكُمْ And this is in all of the affairs of the human beings. That maybe that you would like something, and it's not good for you, it's evil for you. This is also in, in all types of, of means and permissible acts and so on. And that's why a person should turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for all of their affairs. There's a famous story that happened in, the, in history that people sometimes they would mention that to show that how human beings that are so limited when it comes to seeing what comes ahead. When a person had a, a huge number of horses and one of these horses, the herd came back and this one horse, it was missing. And people came to the owner and they said, you know, we feel bad for you, but hopefully things will be better for you that you lost the best of your horses and so on. He said, maybe who said that it's evil for me? Who said that this is something that is bad? Who knows? And then after some time, uh, they saw that the horse is coming with a huge number of horses that he brought with him uh, free of charge to the owner. So the same people came to him and they said, congratulations, this is great news for you. This is something very good for you. He said, who knows that it's good for me? Who knows that it's good for me? And then after that, uh, his son, he rides on that horse 
and the horse, his son falls from the horse and his, his leg is broken. So the people will come to him and they would say, we feel bad for you, hope that things are, will get better for you. He said, who said that this is something not good for me? And then it goes on that uh, a war was diverted from them as a result of his son having his leg broken. The enemy, they felt bad for, for the son, something of that nature. So the people came and they said, your son being with a broken uh, leg it was a good fortune for you. He said, who said that this is a good thing for us? The, the, the point of it is, we don't know the outcome of things. Human beings are so much with, uh, in haste when it comes to knowing what is good and what is evil. They just taste the immediate joy or the immediate misery. They don't look ahead. They don't have the patience to wait and see. How many people they didn't choose, for example, a position to be in. Or, uh, for example, some people they would dislike so much to have children or something of that nature. And then days passes and so on. And they would feel so much in regret that they hated it in the, in the beginning because of the good outcome that happens to them and so on. And this is something that we need to witness in our life to be patient and to follow the orders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and one of which such an order. Imam Az-Zuhri uh, rahimahullah, he has a statement with regarding to this verse, but we'll mention his statement inshallah ta'ala right after the break, so stay with us. <laughs> Are you up to date with the latest gadgets and devices? Or do you get confused when someone even mentions the word computer? Conquer your fear and learn how to get the best out of the latest computer software, smartphones, and the latest cutting edge technology by tuning into Tech Talk with Dr. Baha. All of this and more in Tech Talk only on Hoda TV. <laughs> Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah. Al-Imam Az-Zuhri rahimahullah, he had a statement with regards to this verse, كتب عليكم القتال وهو كره لكم, that fighting has been enjoyed upon you while it is hateful to you. He said in the meaning of which that al-jihad or fighting in the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala واجب على كل أحد غزا أو قاعد that it's mandatory for everyone, whether they fought or they were staying behind. Uh, so even the one that is staying behind, that is not fighting in the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's mandatory for him. If he, uh, they are seeking help from him, then he should help. If they are asking him or ordered by the leader of uh, the Muslims and so on to go out and fight for the sake of Allah and he has the means, then he should. And if there is no need for him, or he is handicapped or whatever, then it is permissible for the person to stay. And this is also from the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ to show that the responsibility that we get as a result of being in state of Islam, in state of submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Prophet ﷺ said in the authentic hadith, مَنْ مَاتَ وَلَمْ يَغْزُوا وَلَمْ يُحَدِّثْ نَفْسَهُ بِالْغَزُوا مَاتَ مِيتَةً جَاهِلِيَّةً the Prophet ﷺ said, whoever didn't fight or didn't even consider fighting for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and dies on that state, he would die in state of jahiliyyah, the state of ignorance that was before the Prophet ﷺ was sent. That means a person or the Muslim in large should have this level of submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that the goal is to make the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala superior. Either a person is guided and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose him to be among those who would fight for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala superior. Or if not, the person should still consider it in his heart. right? Something that a person, if he is uh, facing this type of a test, that he would be patient and he would fulfill the orders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because this is an ordainment from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And again, all of that is to bring what is good and not to bring what is evil. And when it comes to the general statement in all of our affairs, when we might hate something or like something and it's good for us or evil for us, it makes things very confusing for a human being. Imagine, 
that something good happens to the person, or he is about to make a decision whether to do it or not, and then the verse says, maybe you would like it and it's evil for you. Maybe that you would dislike it and it's good for you. How would you know then? We don't have the capacity to know what comes ahead. The future is not in our control. And that's why it's the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he said at the end of the verse, Wallahu ya'lam wa antum la ta'lamun. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows and you do not know. That means what? Put your trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Put your trust into the one that he has all the knowledge. The past, the future, the present, the impossible. Because the cre- he is the creator of all things. And that's why for the believers to put their trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, fulfill the orders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it would bring definitely what is good. We see that when the ummah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they left this order of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what happened? They are afflicted with humility. As the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in the authentic hadith, that one of which, if you, إِذَا تَبَيَعْتُمْ بِالْعِينَ وَاتَّبَعْتُمْ أَثْنَبِ الْبَقْرَ وَرَدِيتُمْ بِالزَّرْعَ وَتَرَكْتُمُ الْجِهَادَ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ سلط الله عليكم ذلا لا ينزع عنكم حتى ترجعوا إلى دينكم أو كما قال عليه الصلاة والسلام which means that if you deal with some form of usury transactions and if you are satisfied with uh, agriculture and satisfied with this materialistic things of this world and you leave fighting in the, in the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if you abandon that then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would afflict you with humility unless you go back to your religion. So the humility that is afflicted unto the ummah nowadays, it's because of leaving some of the religion, and one of which is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordained unto this ummah. This is an ummah, this is a nation that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from it, to be struggling for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to make the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala superior, and for humanity to be in state of happiness when they get the truth to be explained and presented to them, in the most perfect way. So uh, many great lessons that a person would learn from such a verse and the Sahaba radiallahu anhum, they uh, stood up for such uh, order from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they fulfilled it in the most perfect way as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered them and as a result of that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made them superior. And it's the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala till the day of judgment that those who would follow the orders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they will be superior. And then after that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the next verse, verse number 217, talks about some of the details when it comes to fighting in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يسألونك عن الشهر الحرام قتال فيه قل قتال فيه كبير وصد عن سبيل الله وكفر به والمسجد الحرام وإخراج أهله منه أكبر عند الله والفتنة أكبر من القتل ولا يزالون يقاتلونكم حتى يردوكم عن دينكم إن استطاعوا ومن يرتدد منكم عن دينه فيمت وهو كافر فيمت وهو كافر فأولئك حبطت أعمالهم في الدنيا والآخرة وأولئك أصحاب النار هم فيها خالدون which means they ask you about the sacred month about fighting therein. Say, fighting therein is great sin, but averting people from the way of Allah and disbelief in Him and preventing access to Al-Masjid Al-Haram and the expulsion of its people therefrom are greater evil in the sight of Allah and fitna is greater than killing and they will continue to fight you until, you ter- until they turn you back from your religion if they are able. And whoever of you reverts from his religion to disbelief and dies while he is a disbeliever, for those their deeds have become worthless in this world and in the hereafter. And those are the companions of the fire. They will abide therein eternally. This verse, They ask you, O Prophet of Allah, about the sacred month. We know that around 13 verses in the Qur'an, that the companions of the Allah anhum, or the people would ask the Prophet sallallahu certain questions. And then you would find the revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala coming and giving the answers. The sacred month, the month of Dhul Qa'dah and Dhul Hijjah and Muharram, three consecutive months, and the month of Rajab which is separate, four months. These are sacred months, meaning that it's forbidden for the believers to fight in these months. 
and uh, some of them are uh, the Al-Qa'da and the Al-Hijjah and before that is uh, during the matters of Hajj and fighting is forbidden or it was forbidden and we'll talk about that some inshallah ta'ala with, with some details but the point is they asked the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa because this is something that the Arab before the Prophet sallallahu was sent they would uh, respect that so much and they won't fight during the sacred months and this is from the a religion of Ibrahim alayhi salam that they it was kept in some things and one of which is this they would honor the months the sacred months and they won't fight during these months they asked the Prophet sallam about fighting during the sacred month and this is has a reason as uh, the ulama they mentioned uh, when it comes to the books of tafsir that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam sent one of his companions Abdullah ibn Jahsh radiyallahu an uh, with uh, in, in a war with an expedition, and uh, the Prophet ﷺ ordered him certain orders. It's a, it's a detailed hadith, but the point of it, that uh, uh, one of the disbelievers was killed in this expedition during the month of Rajab, which is a sacred month. So the disbelievers, they said, here you go, the Prophet ﷺ is not honoring the sacred month. And they would fight in the sacred month and someone was killed during the expedition. The verses were revealed. يَسْأَلُونَكَ عَنِ الشَّهْرِ الْحَرَامِ قِتَالٍ فِيهِ They ask you, O Prophet of Allah, about the sacred month, قِتَالٍ فِيهِ Fighting during the sacred month. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, قُلْ قِتَالٌ فِيهِ كَبِيرٌ Say, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that fighting in it, kabir, meaning, kabir literally means it's big. And what it means here, it's a major sin, a great sin, something that is forbidden for the believers to do. Some of the ulama, and this is the jumhur, the majority of the ulama, they are in the opinion that this is valid and it's not something that was abrogated. And others, they said that it's been abrogated. And the Prophet ﷺ himself, he fought uh, the tribe of Hawazin and Thaqif during the month of the Al-Qa'da, for example. So the Prophet ﷺ fought them uh, during the sacred month. So that means what comes after that from the orders from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that was abrogating this verse when it comes to the ruling, when it comes to fighting in the sacred month. So uh, the, the, the verse says, قُلْ قِتَالٌ فِيهِ كَبِيرٌ That this is a major sin. وَصَدٌ عَنْ سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ That this is a great sin. But then the meaning of it, that for the disbelievers to avert people away from the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When the disbelievers, they're the ones that are arguing and saying that we honor the sacred month and how the Prophet ﷺ would fight us in the sacred month, then the verse is refuting this call by saying, you are a disbeliever, you are the ones that are averting the believers from the proper belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And how can you say that when you are the ones that are averting the people away from the orders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa kufrum bihi and disbelieving in him uh, and uh, preventing the access uh, of uh, the believers to the masjid al-haram when they prevented the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and the companions radiyallahu anhum from uh, going to al-masjid al-haram in mecca wa ikhraj ahlihi minhu akbar 'inda allah and uh, diverting or taking people or an expulsion of people outside of mecca what they did to the companions radiyallahu anhum when they kicked them out of mecca this is akbar 'inda allah this is more greater when it comes to a sin, uh, to, into the side of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In the side of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is what's, what's even more major when it comes to a sin than what the disbelievers they claimed of fighting during the sacred month. So pr putting things in perspective and showing the, uh, the inside feelings and the corruption in the hearts of the disbelievers when they have these double standards in their life. They would order or they would honor some of the orders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but on the other hand, they would undermine the orders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in many things. Basically, based on their benefit and their immediate benefit on the face of earth. For the believers, when they fulfill the orders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's not to bring any good to them or to divert evil from them. They would do that for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, seeking the rewards in the hereafter. Protecting themselves from the punishment in the hereafter. And if they would do that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will guide them to have what is good on the face of earth. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
Sazir in the Quran, وَأَخْرَاجُ أَهْلِهِ مِنْهُ أَكْبَرُ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ That for those who would expel the believers from Mecca, this is a major and a much more sin to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala than what the disbelievers claimed that the companions of the Prophet sallam killed someone in the sacred months. وَالْفِتْنَةُ أَكْبَرُ مِنَ الْقَتْلِ Putting things in the proper perspective, that al-fitna is far more greater than killing. And the fitna here means that it means that when the disbelievers would be a fitna for the believers, would divert the believers and would force them to change their religion and renegate from the truth and renegate from the deen of al-Islam, this is much more of a greater sin than killing. And this is to show that the religion is the most valuable thing in one's life. For a person to die in the state of al-Islam, this is uh, such a valuable thing that is more honored and more valuable than life itself. Why? Because if a person dies in the state of Islam, he receives the everlasting happiness. But if a person dies in the state of other than the religion of Islam, he would in everlasting misery. So that's why when it comes to the fitna even, uh, and why the fitan or the tribulations is such an evil thing that the Prophet ﷺ mentioned in many a hadith, that we should stay away from fitna, we should not look up into the fitna, we should not get closer to it when it comes to tribulations and so on. Because the major uh, problem with the fitan, with the different types of tribulations, that it might divert the per- person from the truth. Not, it's, it's not about killing or losing wealth or losing lives. The more danger is when a person would lose one's religion. When a person's religion would be changed, when a person would be deceived, when a person would be in state of illusion, right? And this is the effect of fitan that a person would face on the face of earth. The fitan of desires, the fitans, the fitans of doubtful matters and so on and so forth. And that's why the Prophet ﷺ, one of the authentic hadiths in Sahih al-Imam al-Bukhari that the Prophet ﷺ said that a time would come that a man would uh, have envy towards the one that is in the grave. And he would wish that he will be uh, in, in, in the place of that person in the grave because of how much fear that a person would fear when it comes to one's religion and protecting one, one's religion. That fitna or diverting people away from the truth and away from the religion of Islam is far more greater than killing. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is stating a fact when it comes to the disbelievers and they will continue to fight you until they turn you back from your religion if they are able. And this is true at the time of the Prophet ﷺ and it's still the Day of Judgment. That means they would continuously try to fight you so that they would divert you away from your religion if they are able to do so. That means even if you stayed away and you do not defend yourself and you know, do not fight for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they won't leave you alone because this is one of the ways of the shaitan that he would whisper to the believers that fighting in the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala causes so much harm to them. So if they would stay away from that, the disbelievers will be pleased with them and they would leave them alone and they won't fight them and so on and so forth. This is something that the Quran is stating the fact that it would never happen. They would continuously fight you. Even if you don't fight them, they would fight you. And they would fight you till you renegate from your religion. And if they are able to divert you from that, then they will continue to fight you till you renegate from the religion of Islam. And if you hold fast to the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they would continuously, consistently try to fight you to get you out of the fold of Islam. That means give up on try to please the disbelievers. Turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. Fulfill the orders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because they would never be pleased w- with you. So why should you care too much about seeking their pleasure? or uh, fearing them, or thinking that they would be nice to you. They would leave you alone. They would never leave you alone. This is the qadr, this is the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you are a Muslim, if you're holding fast to the truth, this is how uh, would be the affairs of those who are disbelievers. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept our deeds, but we will continue inshallah ta'ala right after the break. So stay with us inshallah. <laughs> إذا دك دك إذا دكت الأرض كذ دكن 
Do you want to learn how to recite the Quran? Do you want to read Islamic books in Arabic? You may enroll in a small group. العسل من السوق اشترى نعم اشترى A private lesson من مثلها في فضلها من مثلها في فضلها For at your own pace to fit your schedule هل أنت قريب في المعهد؟ Courses for sisters with female instructors We're bringing you the latest software technology professional instructors and a state-of-the-art classroom to the comfort of your home. Enroll now in Huda Academy. Huda Academy, your gateway to authentic Islamic knowledge. Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam ala Rasulillah. Continuing with verse number 217 from Surah Al-Baqarah and some of the details when it comes to uh, the order from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the believers to fight for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala exposed the affairs of the disbelievers, that they would continuously fight you until they would take you out of the fold of Islam if they are able to do so. So as a result of that, give up on trying to please them. Or don't think that when the shaitan whispered to you, uh, this is what the verse meaning, that if the shaitan whispered to you, that the disbelievers would leave you alone if you abandon fighting for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that's wrong. Because they would continuously to fight you as long as they would have hope that you would leave the religion of Islam. And this is something that uh, we talked about it before when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَن تَرْضَ عَنْكَ الْيَهُودُ وَلَا النَّصَارَ حَتَّى تَتَّبِعَ مِلَّتَهُمْ That they would never be pleased with you, the Jews and the Christians, unless you would follow their way. So give up on trying to please them. Please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone and treat them by the way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered you to treat them. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not order anything but its justice or mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَنْ يَرْتَدَدْ مِنْكُمْ عَنْ دِينِهِ فَيَمُتْ وَهُوَ كَافِرْ فَأُولَٰئِكَ حَبِّطَتْ أَعْمَالُهُمْ فِي الدُّنْيَا وَالْأَخِرَةِ Which means that, and whoever of you reverts from his religion to disbelief and dies while he is a disbeliever, for those their deeds have become worthless in this world and in the hereafter. Those that the disbelievers will be successful to pressure them and to fight against them and they would renegate from the truth. These are the people that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says whoever renegate from the truth, from the truth which is the religion of Islam and stays in that state of renegation till a person would die in the state of kufr, dies in the state of disbelief. These are the people their deeds will be rendered in vain. They won't be benefited from their deeds that they did whether it's in this life or in the hereafter. Uh, this is also an important statement in the verse that shows that people as a result of the disbeliever fighting them or pressuring them or uh, trying to change them, some people might be affected by that. Those of the weak, iman, the weak faith in sins and obeying the ways of the disbelievers can lead the person to such a state. Obeying the disbelievers can lead the person step by step to, uh, for someone to follow their way. Uh, and that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warned the believers from such a way. And that also shows the importance and the benefits of why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordained jihad and fighting for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala unto the believers, for them to protect their religion. And for them to protect the religions of others, because the disbelievers would try to divert them from that. And also it's mentioned as we heard in the verses, that when it comes to the ordainment from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the believers to fight in the way of, in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is not for every single person as a mandatory thing, but it's as the ijma' or as the consensus among the ulama that what stays to the ummah in large, that if a group of the believers, they would take uh, that responsibility and would be sufficient for the rest of the ummah, the rest of the ummah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa then that will be sufficient. But if not, 
then it's mandatory for all of them till a group of people will be sufficient to divert the disbelievers and so on. And when it comes to the enemies or the disbelievers, they enter into one of the Muslim territory, then it's mandatory for everyone to fight back and to protect the Muslim territories and so on. So, Those who would renegade from his religion, from the truth, and he dies in the state of disbelief, the worst sin is when a person with disbelief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala falls into matters of shirk, associating partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's the only sin that if a person dies without repenting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from, then it is not, is not accepted unless a person would repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Meaning, that's the only sin that a person would not forgive in the hereafter. The believers, if they die in the state of Al-Islam, and they had incurred some sins unto themselves. They didn't repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If they die still in the state of Islam, either Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would forgive them, or they will be punished, and then eventually they would enter the Jannah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But for those who die in the state of disbelief, they would never be forgiven. This is something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in the Quran. In Allah la yaghfiru wa bi, wa yaghfiru ma duna dhalika li yasha. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not forgive Matters of shirk, matters of associating partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he forgives anything that is lesser than that. And also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَنْ يَبْتَغِي غَيْرَ الْإِسْلَامِ دِينًا فَلَا يُقْبَلَ مِنْ وَوْفِ الْأَخِرَةِ مِنَ الْخَوَاسِرِينَ That whoever takes a religion other than the religion of Islam, it would never be accepted from that person, and he will be among the losers in the hereafter. So this is statements that are very clear, not ambiguous whatsoever, that shows the importance of holding fast to the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the proper belief that the believers should have. The disbeliever, a person dying in the state of disbelief, would be uh, the mean for the person's deed to be rendered. فَأُولَٰئِكَ حَبِطَتْ أَعْمَلُهُمْ فِي الدُّنْيَا وَالْإِخْرَةِ The deeds will be rendered in this life and in the hereafter. It won't be accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Which also another benefit that the believers, their hearts are attached to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when they do the good deeds, that they want to make sure that they would receive the rewards from these deeds in the hereafter. That means they would deserve to receive that till the moment of death comes. A person might do deeds sincerely for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but then a person would do something to render these deeds and to lose these deeds. One of which is the state of disbelief, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forbid. When a person disbelieves after being a believer, then all the deeds of that person while he was in the state of Iman, the state of faith, is gone away and, he's, and it's rendered. The same thing when it comes to the believers. Some of the things that the Prophet ﷺ mentioned or even mentioned in the Qur'an, that if a person would do, would render some of the deeds of the person still being in the state of Islam. Like for example, giving someone charity and then bragging about it and reminding the person that you gave charity to, that this is a favor from you unto him, that you would make him feel bad about it, that takes away the deeds that the person would receive as a result of giving for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And as the Prophet wasallam said in the authentic hadith, مَنْ تَرَكَ صَلَاةَ الْعَصْرِ مُتَعَمِّدًا فَقَدْ حَبِطَ عَمَلُ That whoever leaves intentionally the Asr prayer, his deeds will be rendered and wasted. Some of the ulama, they said all the previous deeds, and some said the deeds of the day. But such a severe punishment for a sin that is committed, which is a major sin, because salah is a, is, is a mandatory thing, it's the most important obligation in our life after the oneness of worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So as a result of that, a person should be uh, aware of that. That when we do the good deeds, this is not the end when it comes to our actions towards that deed. You take the means before you do the good deeds and you would prepare yourself and you would uh, do certain things to get you to do the good deed. Uh, and that's before the action. And then during the action you're doing it the best way you can. Then once you finish this good deed, it doesn't mean that it's finished and a person would receive the rewards and a person won't waste it afterwards. That's wrong. A person has to keep it and to protect it till the person dies and to protect the good deeds that we do in our life is to stay on the state of Iman, to stay in the state of faith and to be among the believers, among the Muslims and 
not to do anything in specific that would render these deeds. So those are the people that their deeds will be rendered and will be wasted in this life and in the hereafter. وَأُولَٰئِكَ أَصْحَابُ النَّارِ هُمْ فِيهَا خَالِدُونَ And these are the people, these are the dwellers of the hellfire. أَصْحَابُ النَّارِ The owners of the hellfire. Meaning that they are the ones that would stay in it forever. They won't leave it whatsoever. هُمْ فِيهَا خَالِدُونَ They would live there uh, eternally. Meaning in the hereafter. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forbid us from the hereafter. The hereafter is the place that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created for the disbelievers and for the sinners. The sinners among the Ummah of the Prophet ﷺ, among the Muslims, some of them will be forgiven. And some of them, if they are punished, they will be punished and then eventually they would enter Jannah. But the hellfire is not a place that a person won't mind to stay in it for even for a blink of an eye. Those who have the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in their hearts, they would never be satisfied to be among the people, those who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is angry with. And as a result of that, he would treat them with his justice subhanahu wa ta'ala, and they will be among the people of the hellfire. The hellfire is the place of the justice of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most just. And he said subhanahu wa ta'ala, وَمَا كُنَّ مُعَذِّبِينَ حَتَّى نَبْعَثَ رَسُولًا That we won't punish unless a messenger was sent. Unless the message was sent and the message was clear. And when the person receives the message, and the message is clear, that the only one worthy of worship is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that Prophet Muhammad sallallahu is the final messenger. And a person would reject the truth after the matter has been made clear. Then a person should not blame no one but himself. When in the hereafter the person will be among the dwellers of the hellfire. And for the disbelievers they stay in the hellfire forever. Unlike the believers if they would enter uh, the hellfire as a result of their sins. So these two verses when we look into them. Uh, we have great benefits. Even if a person is not in the state of fighting for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there are so much great benefits. Uh, these benefits are in matters of aqidah, in matters of belief, and also in matters of actions. In matters of beliefs, that we believe that fighting in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's one of the obligations. It's one of the obligations that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered the believers. This is part of the religion of Islam. Of course, when the person or when the uh, the, the, the people are able to do so. And it has certain regulations and, and rules, of course. It's not just something that people would do individually. It's something that has its own regulations that people should observe following the people of knowledge and so on. So uh, this is a belief that the believers they have. Also, a matter of belief that when it comes to the uh, enemies of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they would never leave you alone. They would constantly, continuously try to take you away outside the fold of Islam. By all means and forms of, of ways, whether it's physically, by fighting and so on, or whether it's non-physical matters, by uh, putting the, the ummah in matters of delusion and making them imitate the ways of the disbelievers and so on. So as a result of that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to be steadfast. And we see the, the struggle that the companions, radiallahu anhum, they went through, and the belief in the hellfire, and the belief in the Jannah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and all these great meanings, verses of the Qur'an, words from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the believers to ponder. And uh, again, one last thing is because of the hadith that we mentioned earlier, if a person has not been chosen to be among those who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bestows his bounty unto them, at least a person would consider that with, with one's heart, that if a person is tested with such a thing, fighting in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the person would fulfill that if it's done according to the way of the Prophet wasallam, then this is part of the religion of Islam. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, to make us among the sincere slaves of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, those who would submit to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and follow the way of the Prophet wasallam, and to make us among those who ponder over the Qur'an and get benefits from the great words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala Muhammadin وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته أفلا يتدبرون القرآن ولو كان من عند غير الله لوجدوا فيه اختلافا كثيرا أفلا يتدبرون القرآن 
ولو كان من عند غير الله لوجدوا فيه اختلافا كثيرا فلا يتدبرون القرآن ولو كان من عند غير الله لوجدوا فيه اختلافا كثيرا